J.D. Hayworth with sports tonight on News 5. For 25 years now, bowling has been televised in Cincinnati. Hi, everybody. I'm J.D. Hayworth. Pleased to be a part of the silver anniversary of King of Bowling competition. And joining me today, a couple of preeminent analysts. First of all, the lady in the beautiful chapeau that's become her trademark. Say hello to Bo Utipo. Bo, an interesting place to bowl, the Western Bowl. The Country Club of Bowling, home of the Hoinky Classic. A lot of money up for grabs there. A lot of prestige up for grabs in this television competition. And, of course, helping along with the color analysis, one of the guys who's grown into the preeminent uh, analyst of television bowling, David Newrath. David, thanks for coming back again this year. Well, it's my pleasure to be back, J.D., and we'd like to welcome you to the show. This year, it's a unique opportunity for us to watch some of the younger players in our Cincinnati area. Today, one from the left side, one from the right side. Very true. Let's meet those ladies if we could right now, beginning with the elder of the two. Her name is Diane Burris. She's 17 years of age, averages a 160. She's a senior at Colerain High School. She'll be competing against an eighth grader, a young lady by the name of Darla Sharp, who does an outstanding job for a young bowler. So we have a real age differentiation. Here you see the data on Darla. 14, an average of 142 in the eighth grade over at Goshen Junior High. So it'll be interesting competition. We've got our field set as we open up with youth bowling this morning on the Kings of Bowling. David, what do you look for out of these young ladies? Some nervousness? Not from what I see right now. Yesterday in the qualifier, the youngsters showed us that they can play. They can really throw the numbers up there. I don't see nerves at all. I see talent. You've seen these young ladies before, Bo. What do you think about it? Well, I think they're going to be a little nervous, but I think the ladies are going to come through today. But again, we're all a little nervous because it's a new thing, and we're ready to get going here on the Kings of TV Bowling. Back after this message. Welcome to Youth King of TV Bowling, brought to you by La Rosa's. If you like pizza, you'll love La Rosa's. And by Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. Back and ready to get rolling with the youth of yeah, the youth king of TV Bowling. And uh, David, we start with a couple of ladies. First up, it's Diane Burris. Diane has proven herself to be a worthy competitor. And in practice ball, she looks pretty good. For a shot to be a little wide, believe me, is nothing to be ashamed of. Is it the nervousness or the hour? Biorhythms get set off a little bit differently here at the crack of dawn. I guess we should tell everybody it's a tape-delayed situation here, and it's bright and early on Sunday morning because this is being videotaped. It, uh, the time factor per the day really doesn't make a difference because most of the competitors that we're going to be watching are used to going out of town and bowling in a tournament. There you saw her pulling the ball past and leaving the 3-5, so that gives her 8 in the first frame. But uh, to answer your question, J.D., no, it's just all the lights and the fact that uh, thousands and thousands of people are watching. And here comes Darla Sharp for her first frame. Left a couple up there, David. Going high. Uh, what uh, what appears to be a little little baby split is exactly what it is. The 310, and typically shouldn't be a problem. You try to make this by shooting cross lane fitting the ball up between the three, glancing off into the 10th pin. Let's see if she can do it. Looks good. Aha, she nails it. What a spare. Uh -huh. First frame. Uh, how about that? You make that one all the time, don't oh, you? Oh, all the time, but I don't want to I don't want to fit too much to our television audience. <laughs> Oh, tell us about qualifying today for next week and the weeks to come. Okay, well, we are qualifying today at Princeton Bowl. Our youth squads actually are finished by the time the show's airing at 11.30. But Princeton uh, today and next week, we are qualifying at Brentwood. Second frame for Carla, and she nails a strike. It was solid, solidly on the wrong side, but such is life. But they all went down, David. Carla's not going to give it back, I That's guess. That's right. <laughs> Here comes Diane Burris, up for her second frame now, after some initial difficulty in the first. Oh, left it there on the corner, David. Go, going high again, she uh, overcorrected for the uh, wide shot in the first frame. Now, when we go to our score sheet, let's remind the people at home that this is a handicap event, and the handicap is added in immediately into the first frame score. So that gives Darla a 34 to 8 pin advantage. 
and with another miss here in the second frame, is not going to help out her cause. Doesn't help Diane a lot, but we should note she's an honor student at Coleraine High School, and I would imagine as a student she'll be able to make some adjustments here as this game continues. But there, as David pointed out, with that handicap, uh, Miss Sharp with a definite advantage. Here's Miss Burris. Gives her approximately a 33 inch advantage at this point. Look at this! Oh, I'll tell you, that, <laughs> that shot there, it still wasn't a good shot, but she's got a remarkable reaction out of the pins out of the pit. She's got an easy spare here with the head pin, J.D. Well, let's see what Diane Burris can do now, going for the spare. Ah. Bite my tongue. She's nervous. She is nervous, you can tell. What a lot of the youngsters have to remember, and, and the older players too, we play 12 frames here. Yes, it's 10 frames on a sheet, but there's 12 shots that you have to make. You never, ever lose a game in the first two or three frames. It doesn't happen. It can't happen. So you don't quit. You don't give up. You just keep at it. Well, Darla keeping at it now into the third frame. Flagging the head pin, leaving the one, the two, and the eight. How difficult is this going to be to nail? You can chop this one, no doubt about it, but she has made it edging there. Tell you what, it's interesting, David. It's almost like we have the antithesis. We jinx them where we call. It's, it's, edging, edging. Really? it's the new rat factor we can Ooh. call it this morning. <laughs> Well, what was the turnout for the youngsters last week? How many uh, How many did we have? We had 114 youngsters qualify, and yesterday we had 70, and I'm not sure what the figures were today, but the kids are coming up. We're real happy to see them come. That's, that's phenomenal. 128 again. Well, she did it before. Let's see if she can do it again here. Come up with a spare. <clears throat> what the youngsters may be experiencing right now is even more than than a typical amount of butterflies to be on television. But the lanes this early in the morning, this freshly dressed, would probably be a little more oil than they're used to. There it is again, David. She slicks it right down there. She covered it handily, no doubt about that. But the, uh, the not that the oil was too much, it, they just don't have the experience yet to be able to play the shot as well as it can be played. Oh my goodness, a 5-7 split on a pocket hit. Oh, what's that? Maximum deflection, right? Yes, it is. Ball's deflecting off to the right and not taking out the five. You know, Diane averages 160, and that, that really, she's not up to her capability. Here it is here. Watch the ball take a big jump to the left. You see it right there? Just missing the five pin, going into the pit. It's a field goal between the five and the seven. Look out. Diane is in trouble. What was she trying to do there to pick up the spare? Well, the only way you, you can do that is to slide the middle pin uh, into the seven. The, the pins have depth, and any time you hit them, they go back and to the left or right, so you have to pick the pin that's furthest in front and try to throw it into the back pin. Well, let's see if Diane can make it up here. Ah, physics just not there, David. No, it's when things go wrong or seem to go wrong for you, you don't get any breaks either, typically. What can a bowler do? Is there something about rhythm, taking a break? Uh, what, what should be happening and uh, going through her mind to make the adjustments? Well, right now she's rushing, J.D. She, uh, in her mind, she's already lost the match. And she's rushing more or less to just get out of here. But she comes through with the spare and sets us up for this break. We'll be back with more of the Youth King of TV Bowling right after this timeout. The Youth King of TV Bowling, where Darla Sharp with that 14-pin handicap enjoys a lead here heading into frame six. Actually would be a 45 and Lee, I believe, we'll take another look at it in a minute, but this girl <laughs> seems to be loose and unstoppable right now. 
I guess getting off to that good start is so important. And speaking of getting off to a good start, though, I understand they have some things planned here at this specific house to get kids started in bowling the right That's way. That's correct. Um, we've got a bowling tip today. I think David should talk about that. Yeah. I'm going to tell you some really neat things that are happening here. Yeah, we uh, we put some uh, little extra time in this year to develop some bowling tips that uh, we hope will be informative. And the one today is uh, pointed right at youth bowling in an effort to get bowlers involved at a younger age and have more fun. Uh, well, we let the tip kind of show you what's going on, Bo, but uh, Western Bowl <laughs> participates in that program quite a bit. They sure do. Uh, they are organizing a league for three to seven-year-olds. starts February the 4th and bowls at 4, 4 o'clock p.m. They're going to put bumpers in the gutters so that the little ones don't throw a gutter right. ball, and it's going to be really exciting for them. They can call here at Western for some details. So Darla Sharp doing a job for the strike of the six, picking up a spare in the seventh, setting the stage here for Diane Burris. Let's see if Diane's been able to make her adjustments here. And she does, David, makes that adjustment. Whoa! Maybe the time I mean out kept her out a little bit, huh? Well, she had to regroup, and, and she probably took a good objective look at the score sheet. Now, yeah, she is 56 pins down right now, but we've got, we've got four frames to go, and with a little help from her opponent, She's not out of here yet. Let's see what happens for her here on frame seven. Going to be a tough one, David. It's going to be tough now. Mathematically, the game is just about over, but here's where you can start to have some fun. First time on, there you see it right there. It's 57 pins. Uh, the strike could have helped her cause. She could have cut it to... Uh, uh, by, uh, by 10 pins, but now it's almost impossible. But let's look for her to try to throw the four pin over to the right or the ball fall in the gutter. One of those two things. Well, it's a tough gamble you have to make when you have that difficult situation trying to pick it up. She is she is a, a very, very nice young lady, and, and we were cutting up a little bit before the show, and I was trying to keep her a little loose, but I could tell by the way she was cutting up she was nervous. And Sharp getting a little bit of help there. But Darla, too, I asked, I went down and asked the girls what line they were playing, and, and right away Diane told me, and Darla said, uh, about the second arrow, which means she's shooting an area, and a lot of our players at home probably do that, too. Let's see if she's in the general vicinity to pick up the spare. Not quite. I'll tell you what, this, you know, this question's come up before. How in the world do you chop pins? Well, you've got to be perfect, J.D. You really have to be perfect. Let's take a look at it here if we can. You want to see a precision shot? There can't be more than a 32nd of an inch. She didn't like it. She stuck a little bit. Watch that. The ball did not miss that other pin by the thickness of my jacket. <laughs> she comes back a nail and all right there. Does, does frustration play a part? Can, that, can you actually turn that around and make it work for you in this type of setting, David? It, do, it does for me, and, and Bo's seen this with me down through the years. I will get so frustrated with myself for making completely unacceptable mistakes, and I can turn that around and utilize that negative energy and, and start throwing some strings of strikes. Some people just get mad and stay mad. Bo, if you could sit down and talk to Diane Burris at this point in time, what would you tell her? How would you try to advise her to try and come back? Well, I think that she's just so nervous now that you couldn't really even get through to her. Um, although, you know, the next time she comes back and tries to get on the show, I think she'll, it'll be a, it's a lesson for her, you know? Well, we look forward to that occasion, and we look forward to her coming back. It has to be a frustrating situation. Certainly, uh, I can't claim uh, complete mastery of this, as I'm sure our friends at home and television critics everywhere will uh, talk about it. Or television announcers, I'll tell you that. <laughs> I've had a few games like this, and you just want to look. You want to crawl down the ball return. You just want to go home. And, and when you're younger, think about this. When you're younger, everything is even more dramatic. So for, 
for her right now. She's dying out there. She really wants to get away, but she's showing a lot of guts by staying with it and doing the best she can, and heck, I respect her for that. Yes, and she picks up a spare. Good job for Diane Burris. She's been bowling since she was eight years of age. First appearance on TV, as a matter of fact, first appearance for both these young ladies with our new and extended format. I think she, yeah, it looks like she's really upset. <laughs> Here's Darla Sharp, whose game has been sharp thus far. Going right through the heart, leaving the 6-10. This one is also choppable, JD. But she broke down the split. She's going to have a nice little game here. Not a 200, but uh, she stays clean pretty close. 190 range. Speaking of high game, uh, we have something really interesting for the youth bowlers that are appearing on our show, and that is the high scratch game that is rolled by a youth will receive a paid tuition to the professional bowler camp in Columbus this oh, summer. What a super deal. So that's something that's really, they've got something to work toward. Darla Sharp working to build up her total as she seems to have the rhythm here, picking up that spare now. Well, uh, once you work that gum over a little bit and uh, <laughs> just rear back and fire a fastball in there. Right now, the pressure's definitely off, and she's getting sloppy. She uh, she just throwing it down the lanes, and she really shouldn't do that. Even though the objective in match play is to win, period, I would suggest she use this opportunity to do as good as she possibly can. Yeah, how does a bowler avoid that uh, lessening of intensity? Is it just, does everybody seem to do it? Well, just about. You know, you can almost pick the frame when people will start to let down a little bit. And and, and I don't do it. I mean, I, I want to bury somebody as deep as I possibly can when I'm bowling against them. You just can't turn it on and off is what I'm trying to right. say. Well, let's see if uh, Diane is able to stoke up that intensity and make it work for her here. She's coming back. Going high, just a little bit high that time, leaving the four pin. The right hander six, and she's obviously not happy with her performance today, but hot. <laughs> we love you, Diana. You know, uh, There'll Diane, be other days. Diane is the uh, captain of the BPA All-Star Travel League Coleraine Gold Bowl uh, girls team. And uh, she's been grooming herself to get here, and it's unfortunate to have something like this happen. Picks up very nicely for her there. She's not uh, uh, lost her poise today. She may be disappointed, but evidence they are picking up the mark. She's not lost her poise completely, and that experience pays off. That's that's right. She'll, she'll want to be able to call back on this down through the years. Can't get the ball to finish, finishing with a solid five. And not quite the game she's used to seeing, though. Well, there you have the situation. As we take a look at the total, it's Darla Sharp with a 182 to 124 total over Diane Burris. And we'll be back with more right after this from La Rosa's and Pepsi. Welcome back to the winner's circle on the youth king of TV bowling. But to get the nomenclature correct, we'd have to say the queen today, Darla Sharp, with an outstanding match. In fact, Darla, we're going to take a look at a difficult split you were able to pick up. You really uh, didn't appear to be nervous today. No. <laughs> I'm speechless. Well, um, check it out. What can you say? The picture speaks for itself. Look at that. David Neurath, mm -hmm. you know she did a job there picking up the split, and I believe you have something for Darla today, don't you, David? That's right. On behalf of La Rosa's and Pepsi, we have a $200 scar uh, scholarship. Scholarship for Darla. Congratulations, Darla. Way to yeah. bowl today. Good news for that, and also, Darla, so you can keep track of the time and know when to go roll some games courtesy of the ball shop. You have your official clock right here, so you can take care of everything you need to tell you what time it is. And time, speaking of it, is almost up for the youth king of TB Bowling, back with the adults and more bowling in just a few minutes. Youth King of TV Bowling has been brought to you by Pepsi, the choice of a new generation. And by La Rosa's. If you like pizza, you'll love La Rosa's.